The Arctic convoys of World War II were ocean-going convoys which sailed from the United Kingdom, Iceland, and North America to northern ports in the Soviet Union, primarily Archangel and Murmansk in Russia. There were 78 convoys between August 1941 and May 1945, sailing via several seas of the Atlantic and Arctic Oceans, with two gaps with no sailings between July and September 1942, and March and November 1943. About 1,400 merchant ships delivered essential supplies to the Soviet Union under the Lend-Lease program, escorted by ships of the Royal Navy, Royal Canadian Navy, and the U.S. Navy. Eighty-five merchant vessels and sixteen Royal Navy warships two cruisers, six destroyers, eight other escort ships were lost. Nazi Germany's Kriegsmarine lost a number of vessels including one battleship, three destroyers and at least 30 U-boats, and many aircraft. The convoys demonstrated the Allies' commitment to helping the Soviet Union, prior to the opening of a second front, and tied up a substantial part of Germany's naval and air forces. Convoy organization The Arctic convoys ran in two series, following the first convoy, codenamed Operation Dervish, the first series, PQ outbound and QP homebound, ran from September 1941 to September 1942. These convoys ran twice monthly, but were interrupted in the summer of 1942 when the series was suspended after the disaster of Convoy PQ-17 and again in the autumn after the final convoy of the series, Convoy PQ-18, due to lengthening daylight hours and the preparations for Operation Torch. The second series of convoys, JW outbound and RA homebound, ran from December 1942 until the end of the war, though with interruptions in the summer of 1943 and again in the summer of 1944. The convoys ran from Iceland, usually off Valfjör, north of January May and Island to Arkhangelsk when the ice permitted in the summer months, shifting south as the pack ice increased and terminating at Murmansk. From February 1942, they assembled and sailed from Loch U in Scotland. Outbound and homebound convoys were planned to run simultaneously. A close escort accompanied the merchant ships to port, remaining to make the subsequent return trip, whilst a covering force of heavy surface units was also provided to guard against sorties by ships, such as Tirpitz. These would accompany the outbound convoy to a crossover point, meeting and then conducting the homebound convoy back, while the close escort finished the voyage with its charges. The route was around occupied Norway to the Soviet ports, and was particularly dangerous due to the proximity of German air, submarine, and surface forces, and also because of the likelihood of severe weather, the frequency of fog, the strong currents, and the mixing of cold and warm waters, which made ASDIC use difficult drift ice and the alternation between the difficulties of navigating and maintaining convoy cohesion in constant darkness in winter convoys or being attacked around the clock in constant daylight in summer convoys. Notable convoys The «Dervish» convoy assembled at Valfjör and sailed on 21 August 1941. It arrived at its destination, Archangel, ten days later. The convoy was relatively small and consisted of only six merchant ships, Lancastrian Prince, New Westminster City, Esna, Trahata, the elderly Clanstefan Castle, the fleet oiler Aldersdale and the Dutch freighter Alkeba. The Commodore was Captain J. C. K. Dowding R.N.R. 
The escorts comprised the ocean minesweepers HMS Halcyon, Salamander and Harrier, the destroyers HMS Electra, active and impulsive and the anti-submarine trawlers HMS Hamlet, Macbeth and Ophelia. As evidence of Churchill's astute mastery of propaganda, on board Clanstephan Castle were two journalists and the artist, Felix Topolsky. On 30 May 1942, the surviving ships of convoy PQ-16 arrived, most ships to Murmansk and eight ships to Archangel. The convoy was such a success in terms of the war stores delivered that the Germans made greater efforts to disrupt the following convoys. The crane ships from PQ-16 including SS Empire Elga stayed at Archangel and Molotovske unloading convoys for over 14 months. In July 1942, convoy PQ-17 suffered the worst losses of any convoy in the Second World War. Under attack from German aircraft and U-boats, the convoy was ordered to scatter, following reports that a battle group, which included the battleship Tirpitz, had sailed to intercept the convoy although the German group did not leave port until the following day, and was subsequently ordered to return to port. Only 11 of the 35 merchant ships in the convoy succeeded in running the gauntlet of U-boats and German bombers. The novel HMS Ulysses by Alastair MacLean contains fictional events reminiscent of PQ-17 and other historical events. The Battle of the Barents Sea, in December 1942, German surface forces, including the heavy cruiser Admiral Hipper and pocket battleship Lutzow sailed to intercept convoy JW-51B. The German force was driven off by a combined force of destroyers and cruisers. In December 1943, convoy JW-55B was the target of the German battleship Scharnhorst. Two British warship forces were in the area. In the Battle of the North Cape, Scharnhorst encountered British cruisers and was then sunk by HMS Duke of York and her escorts in a night action before it could return to port. German destroyers missed the convoy, which had been diverted north based on intelligence from the Norwegian resistance movement. <laughs> List of Arctic convoys Topic nineteen forty one. Topic nineteen forty two. Topic nineteen forty three. Topic nineteen forty four. Topic nineteen forty five. Topic Purpose and Strategic Impact. Cargo included tanks, fighter planes, fuel, ammunition, raw materials, and food. The early convoys in particular delivered armored vehicles and Hawker Hurricanes to make up for shortages in the Soviet Union. The Arctic convoys caused major changes to naval dispositions on both sides, which arguably had a major impact on the course of events in other theaters of war. As a result of early raids by destroyers on German coastal shipping and the commando raid on Vagsoy, Hitler was led to believe that the British intended to invade Norway again. This, together with the obvious need to stop convoy supplies reaching the Soviet Union, caused him to direct that heavier ships, centered on the battleship Tirpitz, be sent to Norway. The Channel Dash was partly undertaken for this reason, as a Fleet in being, 
Tirpitz and the other German capital ships tied down British resources which might have been better used elsewhere, for example combating the Japanese in the Indian Ocean. The success of Nisenau and Scharnhorst in Operation Berlin during early 1941 had demonstrated the potential German threat. However, as the air gap over the North Atlantic closed, Huff Duff radio triangulation equipment improved, airborne centimetric radar was introduced and convoys received escort carrier protection, the scope for commerce raiding diminished. Aside from an abortive attempt to interdict PQ-12 in March 1942 and a raid on Spitsbergen in September 1943, Tirpitz spent most of World War II in Norwegian fjords. She was penned in and repeatedly attacked until she was finally sunk in Trumsa Fjord on 12 November 1944 by the RAF. Other Kriegsmarine capital ships either never got to Norway e Nisenau, were chased off, or were sunk by superior forces e In particular, the unsuccessful attack on convoy JW-51B the Battle of the Barents Sea, where a strong German naval force failed to defeat a British escort of cruisers and destroyers, infuriated Hitler and led to the strategic change from surface raiders to submarines. Some capital ships were physically dismantled and armament used in coastal defences. Leningrad under the siege was one of important destinations for supplies from the convoys. From 1941 food and munition supplies were delivered from British convoys to Leningrad by trains, barges, and trucks. Supplies were often destroyed by the Nazi air bombings, and by naval detachment K while on the way to Leningrad. However, convoys continued deliveries of food in 1942, 1943, and through 1944. Towards the end of the war the material significance of the supplies was probably not as great as the symbolic value hence the continuation—at Stalin's insistence, of these convoys long after the Soviets had turned the German land offensive, it has been said that the main value of the convoys was political, proving that the Allies were committed to helping the Soviet Union at a time when they were unable to open a second front. <laughs> <laughs> British intelligence Ultra signals intelligence gained from the German Enigma code being broken at Bletchley Park played an important part in the eventual success of the convoys. German documents related to the Enigma coding machine were captured during the commando raids of Operation Archery and Operation Anklet the 27th of December 1941. The documents enabled the British to read messages on the home waters naval enigma used by surface ships and U-boats in the Arctic Heimisch, later Hydra Network, Dolphin to the British for the rest of the war. In January 1942 reinforcements of Luftwaffe bombers, torpedo bombers and long-range reconnaissance aircraft were sent to northern Norway and new command organisations established at Stavanger and Kirkenes, followed by Fliegerfuhrer Lofoten who was charged with the defence of Norway and offensive operations against Allied convoys. The three U-boats in the area were increased to nine and another six were distributed between Bergen, Trondheim and Narvik to reconnoitre and oppose Allied landings. In May, all the U-boats came under Arctic command and on 23 May, Admiral Scheer and Prinz Eugen joined Tirpitz at Trondheim, followed by Admiral Hipper. By 26 May Lutzow had arrived at Narvik. The British read these moves from ultra-intercepts and traffic analysis from the RAF Y station at RAF Cheadle, which eavesdropped on communications between Luftwaffe aircraft and ground stations. 
The reinforcement of the U-boat force in the Arctic to 12 in March and 21 in August the real number was later found to be 23 was followed, along with the transfer orders to the large German ships, leading to the ambush of Prinz Eugen by the submarine HMS Trident off Trondheim on 23 February. Prinz Eugen was badly damaged by a torpedo and the Admiralty was informed of the hit by an Enigma intercept the next day. The information could not always be acted upon because much of it was obtained at short notice but the intelligence did allow the Royal Navy to prepare for battle and convoys could be given appropriate escorting forces. The interception and sinking of Scharnhorst by HMS Duke of York was greatly assisted by ultra intercepts. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Literary depictions. The 1955 novel HMS Ulysses by Scottish writer Alastair MacLean, considered a classic of naval warfare literature and the 1967 novel The Captain by Dutch author Jan de Hartog are set during the Arctic convoys. The two books differ in style, characterization and philosophy de Hartog was a pacifist, which cannot be said about MacLean. Both convey vividly the atmosphere of combined extreme belligerent action and inhospitable nature, pushing protagonists to the edge of endurance and beyond. The Norwegian historic account One in Ten Had to Die HVERT and Man Matt Du also 1967 by writer Per Hansen is based on the experience of the Norwegian sailor Leif Heimstad and other members of the Norwegian merchant fleet during World War II. The 1973 Russian novel Requiem for Convoy PQ-17 by writer Valentin Pickle depicts the mission of Convoy PQ-17, reflecting the bravery and courage of ordinary sailors in the merchant ships and their escorts, who took mortal risks to provide Allied aid. Other supply convoys The Arctic route was the shortest and most direct route for Lend-Lease aid to the USSR, though it was also the most dangerous. Some 3,964,000 tons of goods were shipped by the Arctic route, 7% was lost, while 93% arrived safely. This constituted some 23% of the total aid to the USSR during the war. The Persian Corridor was the longest route, and was not fully operational until mid-1942. Thereafter it saw the passage of 4,160,000 tons of goods, 27% of the total. The Pacific route opened in August 1941, but was affected by the start of hostilities between Japan and the U.S. with the attack on Pearl Harbor. After December 1941, only Soviet ships could be used and as Japan and the USSR observed a strict neutrality towards each other, only non-military goods could be transported. Nevertheless, 8,244,000 tons of goods went by this route, 50% of the total. A branch of the Pacific route began carrying goods through the Bering Strait to the Soviet Arctic coast in June 1942. From July through September, small Soviet convoys assembled in Providence Bay, Siberia to be escorted north through the Bering Strait and west along the Northern Sea Route by icebreakers and Lend Lease Admirable class minesweepers. A total of 452,393 tons passed through the Bering Strait aboard 120 ships. Part of this northern tonnage was fuel for the airfields along the Alaska-Siberia air route. Provisions for the airfields were transferred to river vessels and barges on the estuaries of large Siberian rivers. Remaining ships continued westbound and were the only seaborne cargoes to reach Archangel while JW convoys were suspended through the summers of 1943 and 1944. 
The Persian Corridor was the only all-weather route to the USSR and 4,159,117 long tons of supplies were delivered. See also Media related to Arctic convoys of World War II at Wikimedia Commons Rasselsprung – Knights Move – German naval campaign to sink Arctic convoys Operation Wonderland List of merchant ships lost in convoy PQ-17 Arctic Ocean Operations of World War II Arctic Star Don't Play the Fool — a Russian comedy partly based on the life of a war veteran in Arctic convoys <laughs>